Uh, I just want to begin uh, by uh, discussing the article that appeared this weekend and the ensuing media attention generated by that. I've been in this business 28 years, pride myself in doing things the right way. So does the University of Iowa. Anything that took place on any recruiting weekend is by the book. Anything that happened other than that is uh, unintentional. And without question, this has been blown way out of proportion. And that's all I'm going to say about it. We got a game Sunday, and that's what I'll address right now. Fran, every university sells its alumni, whether it's when they go, you go to football games and there's posters of Sean Green, Chad Greenway, whatever. How difficult is it to find that happy medium between here's an alumni that advanced to the highest level and also when you have a recruit on a trip to try to do things that that don't bend or even stray into the possible gray area of introductions and that sort of thing. You know, it, it's difficult because, you, you know, you, you like to think in all of those cases you mentioned that, that, that there's a story to be told that may have some benefit, but, you know, the rules include us from doing it intentionally. Uh, everybody knows that at various places you might bump into somebody. It might be accidental. You try to make sure it doesn't happen at all. You try to make sure if it does, it's on a limited basis. And uh, it's just the way the rules are. We all know that it happens a lot more in some places than others. And there is, you, you, you said it, there is a fine line. You know, what's beneficial and what makes sense and what's against the rules. The bottom line is you have to follow the rules. We can debate them. I mean, I'll tell you this story. Uh, if any of you uh, were looking into my background, you would know that I had one other secondary violation in my coaching career. We sent a recruiting mail out in color on plain white paper. If it was on letterhead, it would have been legal. If it was in black and white on plain, plain white, white paper, it would have been legal. But because it was color on plain white paper, it was a violation, which we self-reported. So that's the extent of my transgressions with the NCAA. But it gives you an idea of what we deal with. Was that Sion Graham? That was at Greensboro. You worry about oh, the color paper caper. <laughs> <laughs> You talked about it getting media attention, and I think it's probably was obvious based on who the people were that were involved. You worry about it hitting your, I guess, speak to that a little bit, and maybe if it hurts your rep at all. I mean, I've heard people say this is somewhat of a black guy, which is hard to. I don't, I don't view it that way. You know, I don't think we can ever completely control what other people say or think about any of us. Uh, but I, I think it's safe to say that. Movie stars get publicity, no matter what they do. And, and, and I'll be honest with you, I, I feel bad for them because they could not have been more delightful. They, you know, when they come to an event, they, they just can't sit in the stands. You know, so where do they sit? Well, they stand on the sideline for a while, but he doesn't want to stand for four hours. So they have to put them somewhere. So they ask if they can sit in my box. You know, I'm going to say no. You want to sit in my box? Absolutely. We made it very comfortable for them. And they, they could not have been nicer to anyone that came in to say hello to meet them. And, and I think that's what's unfortunate because I think people are looking at them funny and everybody funny. It was as innocent and you know unprepared as it could possibly be. And I don't want any, I don't want anybody to think anything negative. The kid certainly did nothing wrong. He just, he just met somebody and moved on. The greeting is legal. But we should have agreed. It's a goal. Not in ten seconds. The whole thing probably lasted four minutes. Any more questions about basketball or the team? <laughs> <laughs>